Hello and welcome to this other lesson of our bacteriology course. Today I'm going to talk about um, another kind of bacterium which is called Streptococcus. Streptococcus is a gram-positive bacterium. Uh, it grows in pairs or two chains and in laboratory it grows with almost any pigmentation. It's able to ferment sugars to lactic acid in what we call homolactic fermentation, but it's also able to ferment um, the, the sugars to lactic acid, to other kinds of lacids and alcohols, and this is called heterolactic fermentation. We distinguish um, streptococcus for, from other kinds of bacteria because it's catalase negative, it means that it doesn't have the catalase enzyme. Mm, Streptococcus can be grouped in four groups essentially that are pyogenic uh, Streptococcus, viridans Streptococcus, Enterococci and lactic acid species. Um, for lactic acid species uh, the distinction is based on the temperature relationship um, it means that there are some streptococcus who can grow, who can grow at specific temperatures and others at other temperatures, but the range is always uh, from 10 degrees to about 40 degrees. They are also distinguished in based on the sodium chloride uh, tolerance. Um, streptococcus in, can survive at a concentration of about 6.5% of this salt. They are also uh, distinguished in based on uh, their capability to make the hemolysis. So there are half hemolytic streptococci that are able to produce a complete hemolysis. The beta hemolytic are not able to to make a complete hemolysis but only a partial hemolysis and then we have the gamma hemolytic that are not absolutely able to make any kind of hemolysis. We also have another kind of classification which is called Lansfield group in based of, on the carbohydrate they have in the wall. So we have groups from A to V. In group A we have Streptococcus pyogenes, which is responsible for acute infections. In group B, we have, for example, Streptococcus agalactiae, which is responsible for major sepsis in newborns and postpartum infections in women. In group D, we have Enterococci, that are opportunists and they usually live in bowel flora. Uh, we have, for example, Enterococcus viridans, Enterococcus fecalis, Enterococcus fecium, and others. We have also Streptococcus viridans um, that doesn't have any Lansfield antigen, so it's not grouped in the Lansfield cl classification. In this group, we have Streptococcus who normally live in our oral flora so they are responsible for dental caries and, um, and other infections that normally occur in our mouth, inside our mouth. We have also strep uh, Pneumo streptococcus. Uh, this group doesn't belong to the Lansfield classification because they don't have Lansfield antigens. In this group we have, for example, Streptococcus pneumoniae. Um, it's responsible for acute lung inflammation and also acute bacterial meningitis. Which are the main virulence factors? In group A, the virulence factors are M protein, uh, which is an antiphagocytic factor, um, and it's a protein that you find in the surface and it binds to factor H, causing rapid destruction of one of the complement proteins, one of the complement molecules called C3B. And it also prevents opsonization. Another virulence factor is uh, 
5A peptidase. C5A is another um, molecule belonging to the complement. Uh, it normally attracts phagocytes and activates them. Then we have F protein. Uh, this F protein is also um, characteristic of pneumococcus and it binds fibronectin on the host cells um, and it's also able to help the bacteria to evade the immune system. Another virulence factor is the capsule. We find it, for example, in the streptococcus pneumoniae and it has essentially an antiphagocytic activity it has a role in the attachment to, to the epithelium and it avoids entrapment in mucus. Uh, mucus sometimes prevents the bacteria from moving. I previously uh, said something about hemolysins. Well, hemolysins um, are the cause of pore formations in erythrocytes, so they make them die. Another disease is the strep throat. Strep throat has important sequelae, which are really dangerous. For example, a rheumatic fever and glomerulonephritis. Rheumatic fever is caused because of the production of antibodies against M protein. These antibodies cross-react with proteins on cardiac muscle, so T lymphocytes attack an inflammatory response occur and the heart valves are damaged in this way. Instead, glomerulonephritis is caused because antibodies complex accumulate in kidney and mm, cause an inflammatory response that basically damage the kidney. So the damage is caused by inflammatory response not because of the presence of the bacterium. So consider that the most part of symptoms we have related to uh, bacterial or viral infections are most of the times caused because of our own inflammatory response. Another syndrome related to streptococcus is the, is the toxic shock-like syndrome, which is really similar to the toxic shock syndrome caused by Staphylococcus aureus. The mortality associated with this syndrome is really high. The symptoms are generally fever, uh, shock and multiple organ failure. Another weird syndrome is called necrotizing fasciitis. Uh, it has a high mortality. It's basically an extensive tissue damage uh, characterized by necrosis with porolent exudate in skin, fascia and muscles. It's mm, similar to septicemia somehow. Another weird syndrome is called impetigo and it's mm, characterized by thick adherent lesions with dirty yellow crust, highly contagious. So I'll see you in the next lesson if you like so that we can keep going in this magnificent bacterial world. Bye!